I have attached the mini human to YouTube Kids on her new computer, sound canceling headphones, snack. I think I'm ready to record this. Hey guys, it's Sarah and welcome to my studio. So last year I did a video about how to sublimate a 3D print. This was kind of an experiment because I wanted to see if a 3D print would actually take, you know, sublimation ink. And of course the challenge with that being, you know, heat and how does the material take the heat as well as how do you try and provide the right amount of pressure and time so that the sublimation ink can be done. And it was also an experiment because it was like I really didn't see many videos on the subject. And based on the feedback I've got on it, there aren't very many videos on it. Now, the method that I showed worked pretty well, but it really works for, you know, thinner, flatter prints, I feel like. And there's also that element of you really have to make sure you have a higher infill with those prints because you're still applying pressure with heat and that can cause things to compress. So I didn't mention it in my previous video, but I actually found like turning the infill up to 50% actually seemed to be the best method for that. So these are all kind of, you know, caveats to doing it, but it still worked. And I wanted to play around with other ways to try and sublimate a print that might work. And looking online, I did see a method where you were essentially putting whatever design you wanted sublimated onto the actual printing plate in your 3D printer, and then letting the printer actually print the 3D model on top of that. And I thought, is this replicable? Is this replicable with, you know, my machine? Is this replicable with other material besides PETG? And it turns out it is. In fact, I created these really cute coaster designs. And this is actually sublimated on the material. And this was done directly in my bamboo. Now, there are a couple of challenges when you're trying to sublimate a 3D print while it's in the process of printing. One of those being making sure that you have everything lined up. That proved to be an interesting challenge. I had previously experimented with it on my Ender 3, and that required sort of finding the center of the machine there. I thought about how to find the center of my plate in my bamboo printer. Now, there were two ways to do it. One of the first way I tried was actually just kind of measuring and then trying to line up what seemed to be the center of the plate and putting the design on top of it and going from there. And that got me okay close, but still off a bit. So the second method I actually tried was just creating a really, really thin square border of the size of my sublimation paper and actually printing that out first. Now, the second challenge I then found was getting the paper to actually stick to the plate. So Bamboo has an amazing textured PEI plate that is you know, really great for printing on. It's excellent for you know easy removal of a 3D print afterwards. I find it leaves a nice matte texture. And if I'm having any problems with adhesion to this plate, I usually just spray a thin layer of hairspray and you know problem solved. But in this case, I actually need things to stick a little better. What I needed was a flat surface. Now, I actually had one of these plates sitting around that I haven't had a chance to play with. This is, and it's probably hard to see on camera, this is one of the sort of holographic texture plates where it's got sort of a rainbow colored pattern on here. And you can actually print on top of this and this pattern, this like colorful holographic effect transfers to prints. In addition to it having this really pretty holographic surface, it's also extremely smooth. So much so that to get anything to stick, you're gonna need a layer of hairspray. I'm gonna say that right up front. Nothing stuck on this until I did a layer of my, you know, Grenier fructose total control layer that perfect no problem. So what I did was I first sent through my little simple square template border through the machine and printed that. Then I brought it out and carefully laid my sublimation design directly center in the square. It lined up pretty well. Then I used some of my heat proof tape that I typically use for sublimation, but honestly, regular tape, I think I've done in the past on my previous attempt with this technique and it worked just fine. I will say that when you're taping it down, make sure you take the entire border of the paper down. Don't just try and think, oh, I can get away with the corners and maybe, you know, a piece of tape here and there. Trust me, I've done it. The paper will curl and then the bottom of your print will not be flat. Avoid the mistake. I made it for you. And then I 
proceeded to print it. And I actually printed this in PLA. This is not PETG. This is PLA. PLA actually takes sublimation ink really well. It doesn't have a problem with it. It's the issue was the, you know, temperature and how long to keep it hot. Now, remember when, you know, filament comes out of a 3D printer, it's coming out pretty hot. It's coming out at like 220 degrees Celsius. So that's enough to when it's exposed to the sublimation ink to actually initiate a transfer. So that first layer laying down on the sublimation paper is getting the ink applied and getting the ink to actually evaporate and sublimate into the material. It works and it transfers, you know, really nicely. Once it was done, I simply peeled it off. And of course, the biggest challenge I found with, you know, sublimating 3D prints is that the paper tends to stick. I found that, you know, some papers are a little better than others, but either way, there's also that element of I can't really clean the print with alcohol wipes to make sure that it, you know, try and reduce some of the stickiness because this is literally PLA be, you know, coming out of the nozzle. So the paper is going to stick quite a bit. So you will need to soak it and do a gentle scrub. But once it's done, it looks really good. Um, a tip that I would recommend, something that I found with doing the sublimation 3D prints, and I know somebody brought it up in my comments on my other video, is you probably want to do some sort of a sealant to help the ink sort of stay vibrant and stay sort of on the surface, if you will, rather than it soaking in. So I did just a simple layer of like an acrylic sealant. I mean, there's all sorts of kinds that you can get. Uh, Krylon makes them. There's Kamar, Varnish. There, there's lots of them. You know, take your pick. This one I think is somewhat of a glossy finish. I've also got matte finishes, so, but I do recommend that. I hope this technique for sublimating directly onto your printing plate comes in handy for you guys. I used Polyterra white, cotton white PLA. That's one of my favorite materials, one of my favorite wipes. It's a sturdy white. This took it really well. Again, any PLA will do it. Any PETG will do it. You don't necessarily have to use PETG if you want to use PLA. Keep in mind with a sublimation ink, you're essentially absent the color white. So to get the most vibrant and best effect, you're going to need to use white and to use an opaque white. So that's pretty much it for this week, guys. I would like to thank all of you who have subscribed in the last couple of weeks. I hit a thousand subscribers. I cannot believe it. I'm coming up on the one year anniversary of my channel. I technically started producing videos July 1st, 2023. So I'm so grateful to all of you who subscribed. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to kind of have sort of a celebration video and I plan to do a giveaway at that time. So I will let all of you know then you know, what the requirements are for the giveaway. I can't decide if I'm going to give away like a bunch of stickers or some 3D prints. I've got my MagSafe chargers that I've done that are really cool. That's kind of coming up on the future. I'm also thinking about potentially starting a Patreon where some of the crafts and things that I make, like my enamel pin designs, I do a bunch of these designs. If you see my shorts, I kind of show off what I've been creating and, you know, doing those as sort of like a monthly pin collection or a monthly sticker collection. So I hope that, you know, kind of comes off as appealing to you guys and more information will be coming in the near future. In the meantime, I hope you guys have a good day. Bye.